Bickley and Marotta. Bickley and Marotta mornings. Arizona Sports, the local sports leader. Bickley Blast. We've learned some things about Tori Lovello over the years. We've learned that he really loves Christmas decorations, that camping and ice cream are great cures for losing a World Series. And we've also learned, courtesy of a recent story in the L.A. Times, that 80% of Lovello's family are diehard Dodgers fans with no plans on changing their loyalties anytime soon. Which brings us to this weekend. If the Diamondbacks are going to unseat the Dodgers for the NL West throne. They need to win this series. They need Zach Gallen and Merrill Kelly to lead the charge in the first two games, setting the tone just like Johnson and Schilling did way back in 2001. But this is even bigger than that. The hope is that one day soon, the Diamondbacks and Dodgers are no longer David and Goliath, that these will be competitive equals competing on a level playing field, and that last year's playoff sweep of the Dodgers was the moment it all changed. For instance, the Dodgers feature seven pennants in their ballpark, representing each of their World Series championships. Meanwhile, the Diamondbacks have 10 logos in Chase Field, celebrating everything from wildcard berths to division titles. Lavello also said in that LA Times piece that one day in the future, he wants Chase Field to only feature World Series titles, just like Dodger Stadium, and this this weekend might go a long way in building a new standard right here in the Valley. All right, today's Bickley Blast brought to you by my great friends at Chapman BMW who make luxury attainable. Find them online at ChapmanBMW.com. Of course, every game's important, and we have that mindset um, that down the stretch here we want to be playing good baseball. If every game's meaningful. We're taking nothing for granted. This group is hungry, and they want to go out and play, play a complete baseball game. So, um, we we respect every opponent. We know it's the LA Dodgers that are coming in here, and we want to we want to do our job the best way we can. Story Lavello on the importance of the Dodgers series yesterday after dropping that series to the Mets. First time they've lost a series at home in a long time. Referring to the LA Times uh, mm -hmm. and, and the admission of, of Tori Lavello that a lot of his family members are eighty percent, Vinny. Look, normally I'm family over everything, but sometimes you have to <laughs> cut ties, Tori. <laughs> Sometimes it well, just makes sense to let people go their own way. The, the piece points out that Tori Lovello at his core is L.A. through and through. He's born in Santa Monica, son of a Hollywood producer, played high school uh, at Old Montclair Prep in Van Nuys, started at UCLA, so this is an mm -hmm. L.A. kid. Um, and, and all of his siblings and all of his siblings' spouses, they're just all Dodger fans. And, it, and he points out that he'll go to parties, holiday parties, and all anybody wants to talk about is Mookie Betts or Shohei or this and that. And it's just that's part of his life. But I do think it's also very interesting to me that at the end of this piece, he said in 100 years, I want Chase Field to only feature World Series championships. Not this other little stuff that doesn't matter when you're competing for championships because that's what the serious baseball teams do. If you go to Fenway, if you go to L.A., they're not putting up banners for wild card berths. So so this is his vision. And he, and he says he hopes their group, his group, will – will have contributed a few of those, some of those. Get them on the path. And I just think in a larger vein here, what the Diamondbacks have done this year, this combination of homegrown talent and spending real money to bring in real players, mm -hmm. has changed my view on what this might be. There was a time when I thought the Diamondbacks are going to have to reconcile themselves to a, live, a life of wild card berths and taking the long circuitous route to the World Series like they did last year. Yeah. I'm not sure I feel that way anymore because if Ken Kendrick is going to fund a baseball team the way he does when they're close like this now, and if Mike Hazen is really this good at building an organization, and he is, then, then maybe this thing doesn't have to be David and Goliath, like I said. Maybe. And, and this weekend, symbolically, could go a long way in kind of hammering home that point. Yeah, or at least shortcutting the line a little well, bit. Well, because everyone thinks last year's postseason run was a fluke, and in this L.A. Times piece and in other settings, Mike Hazen has said, that's fair. We won 84 games last year, and when you win 84 games, nobody expects you to get to the World Series. Part of the reason I love Mike Hazen is that's the, he's just an honest dude. Yeah, but the the fluke is kind of in the in the, the process, isn't it? 
if a system is in place that allows an 84 win team to make the postseason, that to me is the bigger fluke than actually okay. proving your That's superiority sure. through competition, sure. which That's the Diamondbacks did for three That's series. A good point. Yeah, that. To be fair, also, unlike, say, the Suns run to the finals where people pointed out, well, they kept playing teams that were missing their best players and stuff, the D-backs went through, like, the best teams in the National League, and they did really, really well, and they, they, they got to the World Series legitimately yeah. by mm -hmm. all accounts. So mm -hmm. while the regular season might have been, you know, they didn't win 100 games, right. they proved their worth in and, the playoffs. And there's nothing better than to prove that point by – by snaking this division title from the Dodgers right here and now. Yes. If they go and run this team down after what this team did with their own finances, then then this we might be talking a game changer in terms of reality and perception. True. I mean, to go back to the point on flukishness, is that a word? <laughs> the flukishness of last year's run, I guess the fluky part to me was, we can all agree, whether you enjoyed the run or you think it was fluky, they weren't built to make that run, not from a starting pitching standpoint. Mm -hmm. For them to get to game five of the World Series with basically three starting pitchers and, and what they had to do mm -hmm. to maneuver to, to victories was amazing. Yeah. They're, and now, yes, this is a big weekend, could be a telling weekend, could be a weekend filled with psychological ramifications for one or both of these teams. Mm -hmm. And on paper, you say, all right, the Diamondbacks are so much more equipped from a starting pitching standpoint to get to where they want to go. But that to me, you know, people will point out the Diamondbacks for title contenders this year. They've got the worst staff ERA. What happens in the playoffs is good pitching can beat good, good offense. That's the thing that worries well, me right now. I it, would love to see like a six-week run of five-week run of, of great yeah, starting pitching. That's that's going to be the key for this team in the long run. I'm going to finally say this. There's also another flip side here that might not be as pleasant, and that is this late run by the Diamondbacks and the Padres, thereby threatening the Dodgers, might actually callous the Dodgers and work to the Dodgers' benefit, contrast and, and rather than them cruising to a division title, getting into the playoffs with a gaudy record, without really being tested, with all this pressure on them to deliver, maybe this kind of chase and this kind of threat to the Dodgers is going to finally empower them to be sharp when the postseason gets here. That's that's the, that's the flip side. That's the option I don't want to come to life. But the Dodgers just won a series from the Orioles, and yeah. the Orioles are a really good team. Yeah. So I think, I think there's a lot in this soup, and we know – you better stir the soup. Stir the soup. I wish they had more uh, available spoons to stir and some ladles to stir the soup. Mm -hmm. I would feel so much better mm -hmm. and so much more jacked about this series if Christian yeah. Walker, Cattell Marte, and Gabby Moreno were uh, healthy. How about it? Yeah. It's, but, yeah it, I would have loved for Cattell to be here to sort of do the MVP side-by-side yeah. side with Shohei. To be fair, I'm sure they'd love to have Yamamoto pitching. To the Dodgers. Oh, well, well, and, sure and not just him. I mean, they've had a number of starters on the injured list. Yeah. number of them. But I don't, so they, I don't they've care been... how they feel, Jarrett. No, no, I know. Have you considered that? We don't care that they have problems. <laughs> They're the Dodgers. The guy they paid $700 million to is going to win the MVP without even doing half of what they're paying him for. Without ever pulling it, putting a glove on. Isn't that right. amazing? Thanks for watching Bickley and Murata. Click to see the latest Bickley Blast and hit the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.